lecture. Welcome to the Roots of Astronomy Society in uh, South Africa or Southern Africa. And this here is the antenary of, you can argue the centenary of the Cape Center. Well, as I go on, you'll see how uh, it progressed. Now, the, um, a very spectacular celestial event started everything off. Uh, in 1910, Halley's Comet returned. Now, this wasn't a surprise. Everyone knew Halley's Comet is going to come back. It has done so a few times since Halley predicted it. And er right, so that wasn't a surprise. What was a surprise was how spectacular the comet was. It was the uh, celestial event of uh, the time and... Uh, Everyone was suddenly enthralled with astronomy, and astronomy was the big thing. To, and in South Africa, it had the impact that uh, uh, this is what spurred people to start an amateur astronomy society. So um, here's another uh, photo that I got of the web uh, for free. Uh, great thing, the web, um, about uh, Halley's Comet. And um, just to give you a historical background, we're talking 1910 or 1912, the society started. 1910 was Halley's Comet. Uh, this was a great time for science and exploration. Um, Robert Peary reached the North Pole in 1909, the first human, as far as we know, that managed to uh, reach the North Pole. Um, just uh, 1910 you'll see there's Scott. Here's Scott with Terra Nova, the ship that he went. In 1910, he was anchored here in... Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's Terra Nova, Scott. And he was anchored in Cape Town. Those of you who know Cape Town very well, where you have the Fountain Hotel. That's where this boat was physically anchored. Uh, in front of the main, or Adderley Street, the main railway station of Cape Town, you've got a war memorial museum, a, a monument, and just beyond that the hotel where the big traffic circle is with the fountains and all that, and there is a little clock and a little statue of a boat, and that's where Scott was anchored. So he was in Cape Town, people knew about all these things, they saw the ship, but of course he was beat by Amundsen to reach uh, the South Pole. And Scott died in his uh, 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 in his attempt. Okay, um, Machu Picchu was discovered. So a lot of things were happening at this time. And then, of course, uh, we also uh, in April 1912. In other words, uh, just before the society started in October. In April, the Titanic went down, and it was still very fresh in people's minds. So this is the time, this is the background, and for the ladies present... Uh, oh, sorry, first, uh, <laughs> wrong slide. Okay, uh, South Africa, uh, the Union of South Africa was created, so after the Boer War, etc., British decided to amalgamate the different colonies in the Boer Republic. Uh, 1912, same year as our uh, society started, the African National Congress started, and two years later on, the National Party. And now for the ladies, the emancipation of women was very much on the cards. In 1912, uh, same year that our society started, uh, female property owners could vote. This was uh, the first time in the history of Cape Town, it started happening all over the world um, that women could now vote and were actually seen as members of civilization. If I could put it <laughs> right, <laughs> this is the background. Now to this, the Cape Astronomical Association. Just one day, in a newspaper, there appeared an advertisement marked there. If you go through the old newspapers, I find the papers of that era extremely difficult to read. The format, the layout, the size of the print, the everything, that anyone read the newspapers and found something in it is absolutely a miracle to me. But to show you what was written there, uh, it was placed by 
Uh, Gordon Moles, he was vice president of the Mountaineering Society and he was very much involved in uh, Boy Scouts and teaching them about stars and all that. Um, Thursday, 3rd of October 1912, and a meeting of those interested in amateur astronomy with a view to the formation of a local astronomical association will be held in the rooms of the Cape Town Photographic Society. In the beginning, there was very close cooperation with the Photographic Society and the Astronomy Society. And this was in the old townhouse this evening. And, I mean, it appeared the morning, and that evening they managed to get 13 people there. And this was the old townhouse, uh, which most of you would know as the Michaelis uh, collection on Green Market Square. And on the steps there, uh, the guy stood in, oh, Ed, you'll have to help, was it 1834? That uh, on those steps, the guy stood and said, the, uh, the slaves are going to be freed, which helped to cause a whole revolution in South Africa and eventually the Great Trek and all that. And on the stoop there is a marker that is physically the center of Cape Town. Uh, so all directions saying Cape Town so many kilometers is marked is measured from the stoop of this building. Anyway, that's where the um, first meeting was held. You can see Table Mountain there in the background. And there were 12 people, three of them women, ladies, that uh, uh, attended. And um, Davies, who called the meeting, A.W. Long would play a big part later on in society. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Gordon Mills. Uh, called the society and uh, most of these people I've got very st I don't even have photos of all the, the people uh, um, I'm going I've written an article which case is going to publish in Manasseh and uh, there are photos of some of the people with a little bit of biographical detail but I'm not even sure all of them were Skellerup is described as uh, by Wayne Orkison as the great forgotten South African comet hunter, discoverer, um, and um, William Reed, a very, another very prominent person later on in astronomy. Now, um, as Ian mentioned earlier today, um, the astronomy or the SAO gave us today this venue for free, right? Very close cooperation between us and the professionals, and that started right at the beginning. This first meeting was actually disbanded or stopped so that they can go and ask the professional astronomers here at the observatory, don't you want to become part of our society? And right from the beginning, there was great emphasis on working with the professionals. And it's been a theme for the last hundred years, and I hope it will be a theme for the next hundred and the next thousand years of uh, the existence of the society, but very, very close cooperation. So here is the letter that was written by Gordon Morse. There's his uh, signature. And um, this was to the Astronomer Royale at the Cape, Sidney Samuel Hoch. There's Hoch. Um, and a letter to him asking him would he not uh, consider being president of this new fledgling society. So uh, um, this letter that I've included here is saying thank you very much and as regards the question of becoming honorary president, um, I con uh, consider... Um, what? Yeah, um, yeah, sorry, the consideration. He did accept. So this is just a letter saying, thanks, I've received your request. And then later on, uh, he did accept, but I don't seem to be able to find that specific letter, but we'll try. Okay. Uh, so our first meeting was um, 3rd of October. Then the second meeting, which you can consider as the real foundation meeting, is coming up on the 8th of November. And... Uh, um, the professionals were there, the amateurs were there, and they formally found the meeting uh, or the association at the second meeting. Um, society association, well, a lot of the people here were members 
of the British Astronomical uh, Association living here. And they were called the BAA, British Astronomical Association. So the Cape one was called CAA, Cape Astronomical Association. So they modeled themselves on uh, the BAA. Um, honorary President Hoog, um, they had a double-tiered system. The Constitution um, said they have a president and this and that, and uh, the reality was, uh, contrary to what the, the Constitution said, they had an honorary president who was just a figurehead, did nothing, and then Hom, who was uh, the, what was he, the chief assistant at the Cape. So he was second in charge, uh, Hoog was the boss, yet the Cape and Hom, Hom was uh, number two. And uh, he became president. He did all the hard work in the organizing. Uh, Hope was just more a figurehead. That's very much the way they did it uh, in those days. Vice presidents, there was even a senator, Senator Roberts, a, a very interesting person. He was one of the greatest uh, variable star observers. And the Bloemfontein, um, um, Boyden with Pat sitting here, they found his original documents, they've got it there and they scanned it in and they now, it's in a, available in a digital format, etc. So a, a great variable star observer. Skellerup, again the forgotten comic hunter, um, and then some of the other people. Okay, so this was the foundation meeting. So we had the first meeting that was disbanded, the second one on 8 November, which was uh, uh, the foundation meeting. And then you had the inauguration meeting where the first actually uh, the first talk was given. So, uh, uh, Leah, when we do the um, uh, or for the uh, association, I think we must have a little bash. We've actually got three different dates to choose from. Okay, the first one's already. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of leeway. Now um, you can see Hoog was, of course, he presided over it. He was honorary president. Hom uh, gave a talk on spectroscopy and one of the goals of the society was to um, have lantern slides and build up a whole collection of lantern slides. They had those old uh, uh, projectors etc of these glass slides and I wish I know what happened to them. They're, they just uh, at some stage disappeared. But in any case... They were around when I joined the observatory. Say again? They were around when I joined the observatory. Aha, uh -huh. we've got a starting point from where we can start looking and searching for it. Okay, fine. Then uh, just on the rules and the goals and the everything, this is um, as far as I can ascertain in the handwriting of Skiller. But I'm not going to read all this. There's the name, the title of... Uh, the, sorry, the title and name of the association shall be the Cape Astronomical Association and then the objects and this was, some, this was a draft. Later on the published uh, objects were different and the, so there's growth and things like that. Okay, long published in the newspaper, the Cape Times. Every month he had, this one is sky in December, there's the star map, etc. And uh, so the Young Fledgling Society got going, some of its members published in uh, the media, and they even got uh, uh, observing sections. Right at the first meeting, the founding meeting, they uh, got a uh, comet or read was initially the section director of both the comet and the variable star uh, section, Skeller, uh, later on, but I'll come back to that. But um, all the um, year reports say comet section, but all the other documentation referring to the start of it call it the meteor section. But when you read the reports, there's not a single <coughs> word mentioned of any meteors. It's all just comets, comets, comets. And then today, of course, the, uh, the section is called the comet and meteor section. But in any case, Reed was the director and Skeller a variable star director a bit later on. Okay, and suddenly the society was interrupted. Will the events caught up to our band of uh, astronomers and the Great War broke out? Suddenly people were called up to go and fight, got killed in the trenches, 
and the activities of the society came to complete halt for about two years. Nothing happened and uh, uh, the society was just there in name only and a few of the members still dusted off their telescopes now and again. But uh, it, this brought the society to a complete stop. Uh, there's some of the things I found at the SA library that I, as I went through the newspapers uh, trying to find articles. Anything to win, it seems to, uh, the Germans attacked a Red Cross ship, uh, uh, torpedoed it and caused an outcry. Um, there's another nice one for you. And in any case, so this is just, um, there was a war going on, people got killed, and there wasn't time for uh, hobbies, for astronomy and things like that. And then, um, halfway through the war, 1960, a few guys got together and said, right, we've got to reconvene the society. Um, now, I don't know much about it, but sometime in 1916, they had a meeting, uh, it was held in the Young Men's uh, what, YMCA, Christian. yeah, Young Men's Christian Association Hall in Long Street. I don't exactly know where that was in Long Street, uh, but in any case, later on that became Eastern Telegraph Company, and we know that Mr. Alfred Bull was involved. It seems like he was the guy that got everyone back together again. And then we know in August 1916. Uh, they decided that the AGM should be held in the middle of the year, uh, July, August, round about there, and it's still like that today. Okay, um, then with the regeneration or revamping of the society, they got to the next step. They started publishing what the society was doing. You had long published in the newspaper, but that was a general column for... Uh, uh, the public probably, um, well, hopefully not on the same page as the astrology column, but in any case, uh, the astronomy column telling you what's happening. And uh, since I published this, we have reports of annual general meetings and things, and suddenly there's a wealth of information. And Mr. Watson discovered a new star. Mr. Watson from Beaufort West uh, discovered a nova explosion. Uh, and uh, um, so uh, quite an interesting story behind that, but no time to go into it. Okay, then uh, fate dealt a hard blow. The war was winding down, the troops were becoming the homes sh shortly, and then the Spanish flu uh, hit Cape Town and most of the rest of the world. In Cape Town, something like 6,000 people died in two weeks. The... Um, the activities of the society came to a halt. Reed was quite ill because of the Spanish flu. Hoch, the honorary president's wife, died. And uh, uh, the flu had a big influence on the society itself. Now, just some Bovril, build your health during and after influential. Always remember that. <laughs> and the life boy saves lives. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then peace. And now the society could get back to uh, its doings, etc. Now, just after peace um, came, uh, you had a very important uh, uh, episode for uh, us or, or the scientists, and that's Eddington and um, uh, with, uh, Einstein's theory and here's a very nice explanation that was published. I've got the source here on my computer but how uh, during an eclipse it bent the path of the star and you saw it. And I guess most of you are familiar with that. I don't have to explain that. And that was a great event. This is just as a bit of historical background. What's interesting is the society didn't publish anything on this discovery. That wasn't uh, uh, published uh, as the Cape Astronomical Society. Later on, when it uh, morphed and became a new society, the new publications uh, started referring to Eddington. Okay, 
Some of the discoveries, the Nova Star, the new star, Mr. Watson of Beaufort West, and he was an amateur, and the overseas newspapers <coughs> got hold of this, and he was described as Professor Watson of the Beaufort West Observatory. <laughs> And um, Reed discovered two comets in uh, 1918 and 1921, Skelerup 1919 and 1920. Skelerup moved in um, 1921 to Australia. He was uh, a telegraphist, uh, in other words, typing Morse code, and um, he came to South Africa for a few years became interested in astronomy here, went back and did absolutely sterling work and became one of the great Australian astronomers uh, later on. Okay, then um, something happened and uh, Mr. McKenzie, one of the members who was actually the secretary, moved to Johannesburg in 1970. And he asked the council of the Cape Astronomical Association, would you mind if I start a second uh, association then? They said, no, go for it. So he uh, published or put another advertisement. And um, 28th of February 1918, uh, the Johannesburg Astronomical Association was founded with at this time, you had a second major observatory in South Africa. You had at Johannesburg the uh, uh, Transvaal Meteorological Observatory, which changed names forever. Then it became the Union Observatory, and then when we became the Republic, it, be, it was changed to the Republic Observatory. He was at this time Union Observer, ob, um, the Union Astronomer. And uh, so he was in charge of uh, that uh, astronomy department. So in Johannesburg, also a very close cooperation between uh, amateur and astronomers. And by this time, people started saying, hang on, why should we have now different members? The Cape had a problem, or in the beginning it wasn't a problem. They had members from Grahamstown, from Rhodesia, modern-day Zimbabwe, uh, from all over southern Africa, and now the Johannesburg section started, and, and so the idea of separate astron astronomy associations, why don't we amalgamate into a governing body for the whole of South Africa, and then, uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, we um, amalgamate and you have local centres. So that's exactly what, was, uh, what happened, and uh, um, they had a vote and all of that. Here you can see there was um, 12th of July, they vote on the proposal, to, this is here at the Cape, to uh, um, amalgamate, and that is how ASA was formed. And it was known as the Astronomical um, Association of South Africa. Uh, it's only in 19, I think, 54, 56, uh, that they changed the name Astronomical Society of Southern Africa. But initially it was South Africa. Uh, there's a bit of uh, um, contradiction here. The, according to Sean Hevel's letter, uh, that meeting was 12th of July, 22, but on the 1st of July, ASA was formally established. The chronology is wrong. Twelve days, or they first created ASA, and then it, they, it's it. so um, somewhere there somebody got a date wrong, and I haven't been able to figure out exactly when ASA was started, when the vote was held, and I'm still looking for more supporting documents that could help me in this. But in any case, happy birthday. ASA, or ASA is only in, in 10 years time, but to the Cape Centre, happy birthday. Uh, this is the 100th year centenary of the society. And, uh, oh, the, um, this is the um, council, the first council of ASA, with Hoch again as president, and he died that year during his, uh, his term of office as president. He became very sick and died. And uh, so, but that's our first council, uh, July 1922 to uh, July 1923. And anyone wants to know more, there is the website, and that's it. In case you don't have to cut me off. <laughs> Thank you.
Chris, thank you very much for, for a really well, interesting and, and well presented uh, talk there. Uh, we have time for one or two questions. Yeah. One small question, and I think it was your third slide. You gave the name of the first three women <coughs> members. Yes. The third woman's na first name is giving us M E S S R S. It should be Mrs. Which, which was the old one yeah. uh, for Mr.'s. Uh, in my childhood, I think it should be Mrs. Uh, okay, um, that's the oh, um, that's the way they. M e s s r s. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was actually I took it just as I added there in the, the thing. Okay, sorry for. <laughs> Any sorry. other questions? Yes, Brian. One of the joys of the English language is the ambiguity of. Uh, pronunciation of some of the words. It was a lovely story that when David Gill, who was director here, went to meet his successor uh, at, 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 uh, on the ship when he arrived, and recognized who it must be, went to him and said to him, you'll be Huff then. Okay, H-O-U-G-H pronounced in Scottish English as Huff. And so Huff he was for the rest of his life, because up until that moment, he thought of himself as how. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I didn't know that at all. And I, I, I said this at a meeting in uh, Spain last year because half as he as we have to think of it now, was in fact a very good Cambridge mathematician that did an extension of some mathematics and there are functions called puff functions. And I pointed out they ought to be called how functions. <laughs> Thanks for that. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much, Chris. And if anybody else asks Chris anything else, I'm sure your team is quite happy to talk. Thanks very much.